The clock strikes midnight, the transfer window is over and it is time to do a round-up and see what the Scottish clubs spent their pennies, their piggy banks on, or in terms of Rangers, their IOUs. Let's get into the action. Oh aye, let's dive into the action. What club are we starting with first, big man? Well, let's talk about the major signers first of all. I mean, Aaron Ramsey. Aaron Ram- <laughs> like us, what, anyway, about 10 fits to the other Aaron Ramsey, but yeah, Aaron Ramsey. Com- completing his deal to Rangers, loan move till the end of the season, mega deal, one of the biggest deals in Scottish football history in my opinion in terms of a player coming into the league, it- it's going to be hard for anybody to match that and uh, I mean if he's if he can play anything like he did at his uh, best season for Arsenal then I honestly think he could single handedly win Rangers the league but the question is, can he? Can he? Is he still good or is he just a flop? That's the, that's the big question, and I guess we'll, we'll find out on Wednesday night. You see, you got, you got to do the math, right? You see if the SPL is that pish. If Farmer League equals player that was the best player in the Premier League equals should destroy the Farmer League. But, uh, Part of me doesn't want him to do well, because then it would be like, well, we'd fuck that narrative. But at the same time, I want him to come in and get like 28 goals to the end of the season. I think Scott nah, Brown too. I'm just going to get the 28 goals. Fuck it. All right, 28 goals. Uh, other news. John Suter does not join Rangers. He will stay at Hearts until the end of the season, which I thought was shocking. Rangers spending all this money, and then they can't even pay the 500k. I mean, they were willing to go 400k, but that extra 100k would, would have bankrupted at Rangers, so it have turned them into Sevco 2.0, apparently. So, uh, yeah, they, they didn't pay the extra 100k. Why? I don't know. Makes no sense. I mean, they, they've showed... They've uh, got, you know, when they're fragile at the back, they need uh, they need another defender. They need somebody that knows what they're doing. John Suter certainly knows what he's doing. Scottish international, one of the best centre-backs in the league, but Rangers decided that he wasn't worth an extra 100k. Exactly. Could that come back and bite them in the arse? We will see uh, later. Also, Jamie McGrath, there was a lot of speculation over him today. He eventually made his move and he's decided to join Wigan, which is a bit of a weird one. Jordan Jones left Wigan to go to St Mirren, then a couple of hours later, Jimmy McGrath left St Mirren to go to Wigan. So uh, that was pretty much the main signings of today. But now we're going to go through the teams, we're going to round them up, and uh, we're going to give our we'll give our opinion on them. And we'll grade them out of ten. We'll uh, we'll go through each team, and we will uh, yeah go just basically rank the transfer window, not just today's. January, you know, deadline day, but the also whole the whole day. window. Uh, in the window, out the deal. Uh, Stephen, Stephen Glass, Steven. Aberdeen, spent the whole day licking windies, apparently. Didn't bring anybody in. And they managed to keep a hold of Calvin Ramsey, though, despite interest of numerous clubs, including Bologna, who were the uh, probably the most highest profile. Although, apparently, Fulham were trying to put a late bid in late on, but uh, nothing materialised there. Aberdeen added to their squad in this window. They brought in Vincent Bichelin from Dutch side Den Haag on a four-and-a-half-year deal. Brought in Dante Polfara on a two-and-a-half-year deal from American University Club Georgetown Hoyas. Um, thoughts on it, that? I'll give them. I mean, it's just the cap- so Celtic left-back also, I mean, before we finish here, we're fucking Montgomery? missing out a couple of huge players here. Celtic left-back Adam Montgomery also moved ah, moved up north to Aberdeen on loan to the end of the season. Um, and in terms of players leaving, it was a goodbye from Ryan Hedges, who arguably is Aberdeen's best attacking threat, I think it's fair to say. And, I mean, to only get 200k from him, it just seems poor for a player that is... In the Welsh team, and uh, we've only got six months left in his contract. Yeah, well, I mean, I I think Scottish. We're not just saying about contracts and stuff. But I think Scottish clubs need to do a better deal of signing their better players up to long term contracts. Uh, I know it sucks. You don't want to lose them, but if I see if a guy doesn't want to be there, I think you need to sell him while he's still got uh-huh. time left. See this losing great players for. If I were thinking keep hedges, it's not the fucking difference between winning the league and getting relegated. You know what I mean? It's. You know what I mean? That's why they should get rid of them from yeah, now. Instead yeah. Of, Dragging the arse out, I think. At least they can get decent money instead of this th- these peanuts. Neil McGinn, who had a decent spell at Aberdeen, also said goodbye to join Scottish Premiership rivals Dundee. So there's a good chance Neil McGinn could end up in the Championship next season. Uh, Ronnie Hernandez had a shite career at Aberdeen. He left too. And defender Jack Gurr also left. And then there was a bunch of players that departed on loan, including Mark Gallagher, who moved to Northern Ireland to play for Cliftonville. But we ain't going to uh, talk about it. Let's just rate them. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, okay. uh, yeah uh, I'll give them a six. Pretty standard. They kept Ramsey. They brought in a few jobbers. That's about it. 
kept Ramsey, kept Ferguson, lo lost Hedges though, which I thought, I mean, especially for 200k, pretty poor. Uh, the players that they brought in, I don't want to judge them just yet, but we've no idea who they are. I, I think it was a pretty poor window for Aberdeen. I mean, you could argue keeping Ramsey's a positive, but I, I think you could also argue that not getting the 4.5 million that was rumoured could be considered a negative. Well, they rejected 4.8. I'm going to give them a 5. I felt like they had a standard window. All right, we'll move on to this. Would, it, oh, would, yeah. would have maybe expected them to bring in a couple of better players, but it didn't happen. As for Celtic manager, Ange Postanoglu, he was busy. And he, he was busy right at the start of the window. Couldn't bring in the players that he wanted in the last transfer window, but he made sure he got them in nice and early when he signed a trio for the Japanese J-League. Madida, Adaguchi, and Hitati. Um, also big Tom O'Reilly. Some so, guy for the Arthritis League. Uh, Matt O'Reilly. That was it. Matt O'Reilly also joined Celtic. He looked really good against Hearts. Dundee United, I thought he was all right. Uh, John, John, J, John Joe Kenny also came in for Sligo Rovers. Was Johnny Kenny a fucking dick? John Joe cares. Kenny plays for Everton. No players left Celtic on a permanent deal, but a, a few of them did go on loan, including Ewan Henderson, Liam Shaw, Connor Hazard, Adam Montgomery and Osas Ogre Hyde. Kind of surprised here because like the likes of Liam Shaw and Adam Montgomery have uh, featured this t this year for Celtic, but then again, that could just be to a shitload of injuries. Maybe Ange doesn't think that they should be anywhere near the first team, and to be fair, he's probably right. I'll, uh, I'll rate Celtic's Celtic Celtic window. window a seven and a half. I was going to give it an eight, but I I'm just not... I don't know. I feel like they need it a bit more. Where? Everywhere. I don't. I don't. I think. I think. Joe Hart's pish. I think they could have done with another centre back. Yeah. And I think they could have done with a left back. Yeah. But the window itself. I mean, it's it's hard to say. I, I don't really know Matt Riley. Uh, you know, don't really know the three Japanese players that came in. Yeah, they, they looked impressive, but let's be real. It's, it's been like one or two games. Uh, I can't. I can't really, you know, say that they're, they're going to be great. I, I rank them highly. Uh, they didn't lose anybody, which I guess was good. But in my opinion, uh, disappointing. They didn't get Jota on a permanent deal, which they spoke about doing. Or Carter Fickers. Or Carter Fickers. So for me, that has got to be a negative for Celtic. And like I said, I think they are fragile at the back. Didn't really bring any defenders in. Didn't improve the centre back position. Starfield to me always looked like a liability. And I feel like Celtic should probably... I mean, they will get Julian back soon, but I felt like they should have probably, you know, improved in that area. I'll give them a, a 7. I mean, I think the signings that they brought in look decent at the moment, but and they didn't lose anybody that's key. But I expected I expect more in this window, especially after they, you know, made a good start to it, bringing in the players quickly, and then it just kind of fizzled out and nothing happened. So I'm giving it a 7. All right, fair enough. We move on to Dundee. They signed the likes of Niall McGinn. Niall McGinn coming in for Aberdeen. Uh, Sack Rudden coming in as well on a pre-contract. Uh, Jay Chapman coming in from Inter Miami, David Beckham's team. Uh, in terms of players coming in, that was pretty much it. They did try and get uh, Lee Griffiths on a free since he's left Celtic, but uh, it wasn't to be. And uh, Lee Griffiths didn't come in, so we'll see what happens. I don't know how they'll do. Jason Cummins, though, on the other way, was out of Dundee. He went in the opposite direction. So they've lost Lee Griffiths and Cummins. I mean, that's... Yeah, but um, you feel like... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what you feel like. I mean, I guess Lee Griffiths is a free agent. I mean, they can always get him. There's no rule where you need to get him by midnight. No. Same with Robert Snodgrass, who's currently a free agent as well. Uh, these players can be added at a later date, but for oh, now... They can be. I think we should rate them, though. But for now, I think, I think, I think Dundee sh had to do better, considering they are in a relegation battle with St. Johnson. And if St. Johnson do hit the form that they had last year, I think Dundee's in trouble. I think they're in trouble too. In but terms of transfer window, I'm going to give him a five. Yeah. I mean, Niall, Niall McGinn looks like a decent player, but this is a guy that's approaching retirement he's age. He's done. Nah, he's done. <laughs> he's not designed <laughs> Tony Watt, for fuck's sake. Hey, what are you giving him? I'll give him a four. I thought it was shocking. Right. Next up, I'll Dundee give him a five. United. Speaking of a team, though, that did manage to sign Tony Watt, I Dundee, Dundee United. United did pretty well. Dundee United bringing in Tony Watt on a free contract. for two million. Yeah, got two million for Jason Kerr. Yeah, a guy that looked good. a decent amount for Fuchs as well. But there's no proof that he'll ever... <laughs> it was good. Uh, they managed to get an Ericsson to uh, be back up for Segrist, who they managed to hold on to, which is pretty good. 
Uh, brought in Arsenal midfielder Tim Akinola on loan, and obviously that was pretty much it. I will give them. I'll give Dundee United a solid seven. A seven. Yeah, they got two million for a fucking job, and they brought in like the top goal scorer. Can't really complain. About that. Yeah, but for me, losing Fuchs was massive. I'll give them a. I'm going to give them a five. Fuck all right. Yeah, I think they lost Jordan Fuchs for essentially nothing. To Peterborough as well. It's a sad day when Dundee United can't keep a player for going to Peterborough. Um, aye, and Kerr Smith, you know, looked good, but now they don't have him. Uh, they also lost Lewis Apierre too, so uh, yeah, I'm going to give them a, a five. Up for Hearts, Robbie Nielsen, he managed to make a couple of signings early on, brought in Nathan, uh, Nathan Atkinson from Melbourne City. Uh, apart from, he also brought in Tony Sibic, who was, you know, had a spell at the club before, and they brought in Ellis Sims, who is looked pretty promising. I feel like this is a dead review, guys. I don't know if we should just end it right here, right now. Well, I feel like we're dragging the arse and going through teams we remotely don't give two fucks of it, but I mean, if you feel like it's dead, <laughs> right, let's just speed time. I thought, I thought Ellis Sims looked good against Celtic, and then oh, he, he looked kept, good. No, yeah, well, they kept, they kept hold of John Suter. Four months. They might win a cup. They might not. Uh, yeah, I mean, I expected more from Hearts. I feel, but again, they're kind of no man's land. Not going to top challenge the top two, and they're not going to get caught. Yep. It's it's about how much do you want the cup? In terms of players, good. Out, Jordan Roberts made his move to Motherwell permanent. Armand Nonjoli left to go to French club Le Mans. Jamie Walker, who, who was back at Hearts for a second cent, is away. Left him again. He's hooked up with Bradford City. And that's pretty much it. Jamie Brandon went to Greenick Morton. Wonder if Chris Morton made a fiddle on that. I'll um, give him a five. I don't think it's that good. No, I'm not. I'm not that impressed to be honest. I mean, you say we didn't lose Suter. We technically did. But right, we haven't lost him yet. But we lost him in this window. You we were going to lose him this summer anyway. Yeah, but then that would be next summer. Window would be shit. But we didn't. We lost him this summer. So for me, shape window. I'm getting at five. I mean, Sims looks we lost pretty. Lost him this January. You mean? Sims looks decent, but for me. Not yeah. good enough. Next up, we've got Sean Maloney's Hibs. Uh, of course, they've signed in a, f a bunch of jobbers, to be honest. But... Harry Clark, Ewan Henderson, and Elias Melkerson. Um, yep, a bunch of players coming in there. Uh, also, that, what's that guy Rocky, called? Rocky, Rocky Bushuri came in as well. And also former Jambo, Dimitri Mitchell, arriving on a two-and-a-half-year deal. American attacker Chris Mueller also came in to Edinburgh. And the, today they signed Runer Hodge, so... Uh, Seems I mean, like a lot of signings, but no one. I mean, a lot of signings, but to me, you'd rather keep Boyle. They're just like mid-table fucking signings. A lot of mid-table, they're just pish. I don't know. I don't. I mean, a lot of signings came in, but nobody as good as Boyle, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, who did they get two point five million for? I mean, it was a decent. It was a decent amount of money Hibs got for him, but three million. Well, I mean, all right, okay. Three million, two point five. What's the, the I mean difference? Is five hundred thousand is a fucking lot. In terms of players going out, I Jamie Murphy. Bank, Tell me, of course you went. Terms of players going out, Jamie Murphy went out, Alex Gogic went out, uh, Hal Kuberg went out. A, a bunch of players went out, but but no one really, as of note, you know, fringe players really. I mean, Jamie Murphy just never really lived up to expectations, did he? No, he didn't. I hope so I'm going to get a six. I'll give him a five. I don't know. I feel like they've lost their best player and they've brought in a fucking job squad. Next up, Livingston, Martindale's job do you feel squad. Like, do you feel like Hibbs should have probably took that five million I got offered for Nisbet last year? Yep. Because let's be real, he's not banging in the goals like he was. Sorry. And the fact that Hibbs don't, fans don't even think he should be starting for them tells me how can he start for Scotland. I know. But anyway, I'm gonna give, I'll am give him a five, actually, five. Livingston boss, David Martindale, uh, brought in a few players. Also brought in a Russian from Ruben Kazan. Uh, also brought in Morgan Boys from Liverpool. To be, to be fair, like we've never seen any of these players play, so it's hard to rate them. Caleb Chuka Wakamika came in on loan from Aston Villa as well. Uh, as long as, as as well as getting in Sebastian Soto Aye. on loan from Norwich. I'll give them a free. We, we haven't spoken about the players that have left. Jack Hamilton, Pish, Harrison Clark, <laughs> can they tie your own fucking shoelaces. <laughs> Keegan Jacobs and Jazza Cab. 
All that matters is this. These shite bastards have been the championship next season, right? <laughs> no, they won't. They're fucking miles clear of the relegation zone. So. Are they? <laughs> Fuck, I haven't looked. When was the last time I looked at the league? I yeah. guarantee Livingston would go down and they're fucking definitely staying up. But anyway, Mother well, they lost. Wait, wait, what would we give Livingston? I give him a three. A three? I think it's pretty dead. I give him a, a four. Motherwell, the steel men. Tony Watt, they lost for that. I mean, it has to be like a one or something. I mean, they've brought Nave Day in. I mean, they brought Ross Tierney, Joe Efford, and. Why are those three? Victor Nyron old then, so I mean, you're kind of wrong there with your. But they've lost Tony Watt. And they also brought in Jordan Roberts. But they've lost Tony Watt. Yeah, they've lost their best player, or one of their best players. Uh, Liam Shaw, also coming on loan for Celtic. Ricky Lamb, he's left. Robbie Crawford's left. Michael Parker and Darrow O'Connor. Not a great transfer window for me. Losing your top, yeah, losing your top goal scorer is tough. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna give Motherwell a, a four here. Yeah, I'll, I won't give him a one. I'll give him a four as well. But yeah, I mean it's no good. Next up with Rangers, they've left it late. They have brought in Tchaikovsky. They've brought in Diallo. They've brought in Sands, and they've also brought in. We may have mentioned it on this channel, Aaron Ramsey. Don't you can complain about Rangers' window? I don't. If they signed Sutter, I think it would honestly have been close to a fucking ten. Yep. But they didn't, so I'll give them an eight and a half. Um, I'll give them an eight. I don't feel like one well, of us actually lost in these parts, which I think you've got to consider to be a big blow. Have you got sixteen million for him? True. I'll give them an eight. I think I think sixteen million is pretty decent for Parson. Let's be real; it's a guy that was barely getting any game time. Exactly. So, and when you compare Tierney, who's playing every single game for Celtic, was in the Champions League and that, I mean, playing European football, uh, Nathan Patterson didn't really do that much. I mean, he did play in Europe, but he did like games, but, but nothing major. Not like Tierney. Can't 60 remember. million is probably good. But uh, yeah, Rangers, I'll get an 8. I mean, Defoe left, but let's be real. As much as I like Defoe, I think he's a good player. Uh, he, wasn't, he wasn't a crucial player for Rangers, he's a bit part player. I'd be actually. I'm surprised Etten's still at Rangers. I think he needs to go. I don't. I don't. Really, I think he's pretty shite. Like, uh, but we give him an eight, an eight and a half. I give him an eight. Ross County try a quiet window for Malky McKay, but looks like they're going to stay up anyway. They've got the top goal scorer in the league, and they managed to fend off any interest from Regan Charles Cook. It's a, I mean, I think it's a good window in the terms that they didn't lose anybody, but again, they didn't bring anybody, and I'm going to oh. give them an average five. Yes. Next up, St Johnston. Busy January for Callum Davis since he looked to find the answer to survival, but you know what? Yep, yeah, he needs he needs. They did sign quite a lot of players. Nadia Shishi, but let's be honest, this is a guy that if you signed him like what ten years ago, you'd be like, "Oh, we've got a player here." You're signing him when he's his career's went down the shitter. His his, his career's literally been flushed in the toilet into the sewer system, and then you're going doing lifting him out the sewer system and going, "Oh, look at my new gem." And when I'm in reality. Quite it. Is that, is that, yeah, well, I bet you I'd rather not. Uh, but yeah, bringing in Shifshi, also brought in uh, Theo Blair, Halberg came in. So, you know, Cammy McPherson coming six. in. Six. Uh, I don't, yeah, to me, the damage was done. I, I think they had the worst window in the summer. I, I felt like. Uh, they lost everyone and didn't do anything. Yeah, uh, so to me, that was. I think Ali McCann was a massive blow. Arguably St. Johnson's best player, losing him. Jason Kerr. And Jason Kerr as well. They, 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 I mean, they're probably the two best players. And they lost. Out, out, outfield players they lost, and then the replacements that they brought in just weren't really good enough. I'm going to give... So this window was decent, but I, again, the damage was done in the summer. Give them a six. St Mirren, Jim Goodwood. Um, done all right. Brought in Jordan Jones from uh, Wigan on loan to the end of the season, but they did lose Jamie McGrath, who they got approximately about 150 to 200,000 for, which kind of sucks for them since he looked good. Uh, also lost Cammy McPherson. Not a good window, in my opinion, I'll, for St. Mirren. I'll give them a five. They did lose a best player, but they've brought in a couple of decent players. Brought in a couple of decent if players. If Jordan Jones can do what he did, come up, come on, it's a good signing. Ah, it's a good signing. Anyway, guys, that's that. So there you go. That's I'll give them a five as well. That's the roundup here for the Scottish Premiership transfer deadline day. Overall, what would you give the window this transfer? It's all right, but. I'm getting an 8. Aaron Ramsey came right. That's big news to me. Doesn't get much better than that. Fucking Aaron Ramsey in Scottish Premiership. We're talking about Watch this. You'll probably be shite. You'll be the man, don't you worry? You'll be the man. To be the man, you've got to beat the man. Aye, until then, Ooh, until next time, start. though. That's it. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, comment down below. And Aaron peace. Ramsey.